Good morning and welcome to Bay Area Focus. I'm your host, Michelle Griego. Today we'll talk about a girls baseball team, an Oakland youth chorus, and a suicide prevention hotline. But first, a look at producer Brian Grazier's new book. Brian told us all about it just a few weeks back. Okay, yeah. so your your new book, A Curious Mind, The Secret to a Bigger Life. Yes. Yes, amazing, amazing book. Already great reviews on this book. What inspired you to write it? Well, what inspired me to write it were a couple of things. Was I spent 30 years, every two weeks, meeting a new and renowned expert at anything other than entertainment. So science, medicine, politics. I met Kamala Harris this way. Just. Sure politics or yeah. Gavin Newsom for that matter and but also President Obama when he was a senator but so I met and, and the entire just anyone other than show business and somebody said you should write a book that kind of synthesizes all these meetings because my view is that anybody can do what I did I started it when I was just a little nobody I mean I'm, not, I'm now a movie producer and everything but well, I started it when I wasn't really a movie producer. You and started it when you were in your 20s, the, having these conversations. Yeah. You set out to do that. What was your agenda behind it? My agenda was just to learn, just to learn about subjects that I want to learn about or to learn about subjects that I never even, it never occurred to me that they even existed. Mm -hmm. And just to enlarge my worldview, get me out of my tiny little neighborhood, because a little, little neighborhood of two blocks and didn't really get out of it until I went to college. Sure. And I just wanted to expand my my life, my world, uh, both through opportunities, travel, and the way to do it was to reach out and try to meet a new person every couple of weeks that could expand that world. And when you first started having these conversations, some of them didn't go as planned. Right. Or as well, you had, wanted, I guess. I had some great ones, mm -hmm. like with Jonas Salk, but then I had some bad ones, like with, um, wasn't great with uh, Edward Teller, the father of the hydrogen bomb, okay. and that he c didn't really care about movies at all, so he didn't really care about anything that I did, and which sort of invalidated me. But, but I reframed that, and, and I learned something from it. But I also had one with uh, Isaac Asimov, the most prolific science fiction sure. writer in the world, and I drove across, uh, flew across the country to meet him, and when I got there for this uh, meeting, after about one minute, he said, we're finished. <laughs> he got up and, and left. And what did you think when he said that? I, I was in shock. I couldn't believe it. He said, it just doesn't seem like you know enough about science fiction or robotics. Oh, my goodness. And uh, he and his wife just got up and left. Well, that's really why you were there, right? To learn more? Yeah, but you're, I think in doing these kind of meetings, you're, you are sort of obligated to do some homework, sure. which I did, but they didn't feel like I did enough homework. And what I got out of it is maybe they're right. I probably should have done more homework. And, and so what I've learned is in each and every meeting going forward to do more homework and create a better access point for the person I'm going to meet or interview. Well, one of those conversations that didn't I'm go as you wanted. I'm into a whole self-improvement thing. Are you really? <laughs> pretty much. And I think the book is just really, it's one of those things, if you read it, it's pretty entertaining, but also you can start doing it immediately. It's not one of these things that you can just start building your life into a bigger into a bigger place, you know, with right away. Sure. One of the curiosity conversations you had was with Condoleezza Rice, and yeah. it actually prevented you from doing a movie. Definitely. So basically I was going to make a movie about the Mexican drug cartel called Cartel, and we were fully insured, and we were told that we had full security, and I thought it just doesn't, doesn't make sense. And I, I'd met Condoleezza Rice, and I I thought maybe she'll have lunch with me. And I put out a few letters and things and emails. And she said, yes, I had lunch with her. And she said, look, I understand what you're telling me, but it doesn't really add up given the kind of intel I've got. I, I don't think I'd do it. And I canceled the movie. Wow, that's amazing. She was awesome. She's an amazing person. She's an amazing woman. Yeah, amazing uh, woman. Okay, so one of the movies that's really popular in my house is How the Grinch Stole Christmas. And you yeah. have a you have a pretty good story about that, how you saved the movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it was interesting because you just never know how the dots get connected or sure. if they ever get connected. So basically what happened is I, I'd met several CIA uh, directors and then one very well-known CIA operative that taught anyone that was captured that was in the CIA or, CIA or Green Berets um, or bla any black ops it, how to survive torture if they're in that situation. 
how they are going to do it, how they'll live. And I met that person probably 20 years ago, 25 years ago. And then, then 10 years later, I'm making the movie The Grinch, How the Grinch Stole Christmas with Jim Carrey. And we're about two weeks out from shooting this movie. And Jim Carrey says, I got to quit. The I makeup was too much, right? The makeup, the prosthetics. He was doing six hours of makeup and prosthetics and big contact lenses on his eyes. And he said, I got to quit. It's just it's like torture to me. Torture, I thought. You, Jim, before you quit, please, will you meet this man I'd met, whatever, 10, 12 years ago? He said, yes, I'll do it. And over the weekend, he spent 48 hours with this CIA operative. And he come out, came out on Monday and said, I'll stick with the movie. That's wonderful. So we were able to make this children's movie that's gone on for quite a long time. And your kids and my kids, they all love the movie. Sure, and a CIA, a CIA operative kind of helped in that in that Completely process. Completely helped. He made all the difference in the world. Well, Brian, good luck with this book. I'm so glad you have a curious mind because we've had so many movies because of the mind you have. So thank you so much and good luck on the book. And I do want to bring up just one point if we have time. Your hair. Yeah, my hair. Your hair is on purpose. My hair is totally on purpose. 20 years ago, I was swimming in my swimming pool with my daughter, who was about three years old. And I came out of the pool, and I popped my hair up. And my daughter goes, I love it. <laughs> so Sage goes, I love it. And I popped it up, like with gel, immediately. And I've kept it that way for 20 years. It makes people curious about you. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> All right, Ryan, thanks so much. Thanks for having me. And for more information on A Curious Mind, just log on to grazeriscurious.com. Again, that's grazeriscurious.com. Coming up, a brave push to get girls playing baseball. We'll be right back.